This is a Sutotal production. Hello surveyors, uh, this is going to act as our second practice video for chapter 9. So here we're going to kind of look at the difference between skeletal and condensed structure. So I got, a, I got you know, about six of, of each type. So the first one here wants us to take all of these condensed structures and write a skeletal structure for it. So this is kind of the easier route to go. Well, maybe not. But um, So what you can do is you can just read it from left to right and really focus on the carbons and how they're connected. So what it looks like is you have one, two, three, four, five carbons that are connected to one another. So two, three, four, five. Um, now if you notice it's CH3, right? So there's three hydrogens there. There's CH2, there's two hydrogens there. Another CH2, so there's two hydrogens there. Then this has a this C has just one H and then it has an OH on it. So actually there should be an OH that's coming off of this and that's what this group right here is. It's an alcohol coming off that carbon and then our final CH3 here at the end. All right, so the thing to kind of remember here with all of these is each dot and each corner, right, represents a carbon. Um, the carbon hydrogen bonds are always invisible to us in a skeletal structure. Now this is also ugly, so I'm gonna clean it up just a little bit. So two, three, four, five. So I would I would draw something like that. That's a little cleaner. Um, doesn't look as crowded as this thing right here. Um, but you notice, right, um, so if this were carbon one, two, three, four, and five, right, you notice it's the fourth carbon that only had one hydrogen. So one, two, three, oops, one, two, three, four, and five, right, you can see here, right, this carbon has a, a carbon to the left, a, a carbon to the left, a carbon to the right, and then with the OH group, it should only have one hydrogen there. Okay, so that makes sense. All right, next up, over here we've got CH3 and then in parentheses three. So what this tells us is this this one carbon right here, I'm gonna represent it as a dot in my skeletal structure. It has three of these methyl groups coming off of it. So it should be like one, two, three, something like that. So that's a CH3, a CH3, a CH3, and then that dot is the carbon. It also has a fourth something coming off of it in the form of an alcohol, an OH, like so. Okay, so big thing to remember here is every carbon has to have four bonds associated with it. And so right now, all of these, the, the hydrogens have explained away, oh, that's where those four bonds are. Okay, now, if we look at this guy right here, we have a one, a two, a three, and a four. So let me do a, a zigzag of a four, two, three, four. All right, so that's the four carbon backbone. You notice this carbon only has one hydrogen. So this is carbon number one right here. And there's only one bond shown, and it's saying there's only one hydrogen. So where are the other two bonds? Each carbon has to have four. So what we expect is this will actually have a triple bond here. So now this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. All right, and then the carbon number two here, you notice it doesn't have any hydrogens right right next to it. So to the to the immediate right. So that tells us, right, this carbon right here, carbon number two, it's got three bonds with the first carbon and it's got one bond with the third carbon. So that accommodates the four. And then with CH2 and CH3, right, this carbon has two bonds shown. So of course there's two invisible hydrogens. This carbon at the end has one bond shown, so it has three invisible hydrogens. Now I'm also gonna clean this up a little bit too because this is kind of gnarly looking. So um, what I would represent this as is, there's that triple bond that I just showed you. And so that's two, and then there's a three and a four. So something like that would be the skeletal structure I'd wanna show for that. All right, next up, if we look, now we have a CH3 and there's two of them. So this carbon right here, I'm gonna represent it as the dot again, right? It has two methyl groups coming off, one and two. Then it shows no hydrogens bound to it, and then there's a CH2 over here. So then there's a CH2 here. Well, this carbon only has three bonds and this carbon only has three bonds. So what this tells me is there's a double bond between these two. So when I go to clean this up, to give it its true skeletal form, right? I'm not gonna show those that CH2 there. So this would be what it would look like as its skeletal structure. All right, next up, what do we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six. So two, three, four, 
five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we see we got a CH3 here, so that would give this carbon four bonds. We have a CH2 here, that would give this carbon one, two, three, four. Then we have a CH, so there's only one hydrogen on this carbon, and it's got a bond to two separate carbons. So this tells me there's got to be a double bond here as well. And if we look at the next carbon, it also only has a CH. So there's the four bonds for each carbon, right? It's got to have a double bond there. And then what do we got? We got CH2, so one, two, so that, that makes sense to have a CH2 there. CH3, yep, so that, so now all the carbons have four bonds. So in cleaning this up a little bit, right, it looked like that. Okay, next up, what do we got? We've got CH3CH, hang on, so CH3, and then we have a CH, and then it says there's a CH3CH2. So a CH3 would have to look like this, and then there's a CH2 right here, and then an OH. Okay, so I had to kind of draw it out to make sense of it. But this carbon has four, this carbon has four, that carbon has four, this carbon has one, two, three, four. Okay, so, so what it really makes me think is that it looks something like, like that. Okay, was that one, two, three, four? So it's one, two, three, four. Yep, so that would be it. <laughs> All right, next up. Going from scale to, to condense, I'm just going to work left to right. So we one, two, three, four, five. So I should see five C's showing up here. So I so this should be a CH3. This one should be a CH2. This one's also a CH2. Now this carbon has four bonds shown, so I should just have a C by itself. And then I have a double bonded oxygen and a CH3. So what I would do is I would show the double bonded oxygen here as just an O. So that accommodates, there's the C, there's the O, and then I have a CH3 here, okay? All right, uh, and so to tell that this is a carbonyl, you have this carbon that doesn't have any hydrogens. So that's one kind of giveaway. Um, so if we compare it to this guy right here, right? so this one would be a CH3, the next one, is, the next two are CH2s. So I'm gonna do CH2, CH2. And then, so we got those three out of the way. So now we have an oxygen, boom, boom. And then we have a CH2 and a CH3, CH2, CH3. And so the kind of the dead giveaway here, um, here all of our carbons have hydrogen. So we definitely don't have a carbonyl like we did over here. All right, let's see what we got here. We have a CH3. Now this carbon has three bonds shown. So it, it, should, it should have a CH. All right, so there's that and that. And so then it's got an OH up here and then the chain keeps going. So I'm gonna do the OH next. All right, and then I've got a CH2, a CH2, and a CH3. So CH2, CH2, CH3, like so. All right, yeah, that's good. Okay, um, and that, so now of course this is an alcohol because we have an oxygen with a hydrogen paired to it like that. Um, now, don't get it confused with this guy right here, the way this gets condensed. So what do we have here? We have a CH2, because there's only two hydrogens there, and then this guy only has one hydrogen. So it's a CH2 and then a CH. And then this guy has to be a CH2. And then we've got this carbon right here, this double bonded to an oxygen, and then it's got this H here. Okay. So a lot of times this does get a little confusing because a lot of times people will see this and think, oh, it's an alcohol. So for this type of functional group in particular, a lot of times instead of writing this ending as CH as COH, they'll write, hang on, let me write the rest of it first. They'll write CHO, right? Because that's very highly indicative of having an aldehyde. They, they just love that abbreviation or that condensed way of writing the aldehyde. All right, and so what do we got here? We've got CH3, we've got CH2, and then we have a carbon that has a double bonded oxygen and an OH. 
So yeah, this right here is highly indicative of the condensed form of this carboxylic acid functional group. So, all right, and then next up, what do we got? We've got C, there's one hydrogen here, so we have a CH, and then this carbon has four bonds shown, so there's no hydrogen on it, so I'm just gonna write C by itself. Then we have, this right here is a CH2, all right, and then this carbon has one hydrogen, so we would have a CH, and then this carbon has two hydrogens to give it the four bonds, so CH2, all right. So with condensed ones, right, it's easy in the skeletal structure to see the double bonds and the triple bonds, right, but in the condensed, it is a little hard, so you really have to track, like, does all the carbons have four bonds, all right. So hopefully this practice uh, is beneficial to you, and you can kind of figure it out, um, you know. Anyway, so as always, stay weird. Adios.